In earlier videos, I showed you how to set up a 3.js component in Hype using JavaScript ES6 modules. In these videos, we employed a fixed camera position which was described in a module called camera.js. In this video, I'll explain more about this module and its role in our 3.js scene. Then we'll extend this code to make it more flexible by adding input parameters that allow you to change the camera's position from within world.js, the module we've been using to configure our 3D world. Finally, I'll add a new module to our project called controls.js. This module will enable users to control the position of the camera interactively. To do this, we'll need to incorporate an additional 3.js plugin that normally resides in the examples directory of the larger 3.js repository. That plugin is called Orbit Controls because it allows you to orbit, pan, and zoom the camera around the scene using either touch gestures, a mouse, or the keyboard. Many of the advanced functions in 3.js are contained within plugins like this, so it's worthwhile knowing where to find them even if you're not importing them directly into a Hype project. After we include this plugin in our new module, our 3D world will look like this. So, if that sounds interesting to you, let's start by considering how we might extend the existing camera.js module. In the preliminary version of camera.js, we configured a single static camera for our 3.js scene. We positioned the camera at a fixed position along the z-axis, mimicking where the user would typically view the scene. This viewpoint and most of the remaining camera parameters were hard-coded into the camera.js module, effectively fixing them for the duration of the animation. There was no way to zoom the camera in or out. And there was no way to view the scene from a different perspective. That's pretty limited. Let's change that so our camera can at least zoom in and out. Those changes would look like this. You can probably tell from these coordinates that values along the z-axis increase outwards towards the screen. In fact, when you view our current 3JS coordinate space in isolation, it looks like this, with the x-axis running left to right, the y-axis traversing top to bottom, and the z-axis moving into and out of the screen. So, let's dig into the code and identify where the camera position is defined and how we might change it to support different perspectives. Here is the original code from camera.js. Like our other modules, it contains one main function. In this case, it's called create camera. The camera's position is defined on this line of the function. And you can see how it takes a set of three coordinates as an input. To add an instance of this camera to our 3D world, we call the create camera function within world.js. We do this without passing in any parameters, which is acceptable provided the camera doesn't change during our animation. However, if we want the ability to reposition the camera, we need to build in some additional flexibility, which means adding input parameters to camera.js. Let's do that now. So, I've made two code changes to camera.js to facilitate moving the camera's position. Firstly, I've included three new input parameters, one for each coordinate. You can see those in the first line of the function. Then, I've used those values as inputs when assigning the camera's position. That happens in these lines of code. For clarity, I've used a slightly different syntax, one line for each coordinate assignment, but I could have equally well used the same dot set syntax as before. They are functionally equivalent. Now when we switch to world.js, you can see how when we call the create camera function, we do so with input parameters included. And if you were wondering what the other z-axis values I could have used to zoom the camera in and out were, I've included all the possibilities here. In this case, the text in blue is code I've temporarily commented out, or is explanatory comments that are sometimes included to document how the code is supposed to work. So at the moment, only the zoomed-in version is being implemented in this code block. There is a lot more to defining the camera than just specifying its position. In fact, we can find out exactly how much more by inspecting the camera object we just created. You can do that by inserting a console.log statement into our existing code, like this. This line of code outputs a large and complicated object into the developer console when we run our animation in a browser. Understanding everything here isn't essential. But one thing you should note is the type of camera we've employed. At the top of this object, you can see how we've defined a perspective camera. This kind of camera gives a 3D view where things in the distance appear smaller than things up close. This is notable because it closely approximates the way the human eye sees. There are other camera types, but this is the most common one. Further down, you can see exactly where the camera position is defined. 
In addition to this position, there are several other parameters you need to specify to set up a perspective camera correctly. You might remember some of those from our camera.js code. These are things like the camera's field of view and two clipping planes called near and far. You'll notice these properties are still hard-coded into camera.js. That's okay because these properties are unlikely to change. This is different from the position attributes we chose to move into world.js. Those were more likely to change during the time our animation was executing. So, you might be wondering exactly what do these new terms mean. We'll consider that next. A perspective camera defines a viewing volume or frustum. Only things within this viewing frustum are visible. The term frustum refers to a truncated pyramid-like shape where the near clipping plane defines its front surface or the point closest to the camera. While the far clipping plane represents its back surface, which is the point furthest from the camera. The field of view defines the angle at which this frustum expands. A small field of view will create a narrow frustum while a wide field of view will create a larger scene volume. The aspect ratio defines how wide the front and back of the frustum are. This aspect ratio is used to match the frustum to the scene container size. When we set this to the container's width divided by its height, we ensure the rectangular base of the frustum will expand to fit perfectly into its container. If you get this value wrong, the scene will look stretched and unnatural. The aspect ratio is commonly set to 1, but the other parameters must be set differently for each scene geometry. There are some other things to keep in mind when setting up a perspective camera. Firstly, it is always a good idea to set the starting position of the camera instead of just accepting its default position, which is the scene origin. If you don't do this, you may not see anything in your scene at all. Either because it's behind the camera or because the camera is actually inside another object placed at the origin. Next, it's wise not to place an object partly outside the viewing frustum. Parts of an object placed outside the visible area will be artificially clipped and this can look unnatural. Also, avoid putting things right on the far clipping plane, especially if it's part of a large scene, as this can cause flickering in the scene. And finally, make your frustum as small as possible. This ensures the best performance of your animation. It's okay to use a large frustum during development, but once you are fine-tuning your app for deployment, make sure your frustum is as small as possible. So that is how to set up the starting position of a static camera. But now we want to give the user the ability to move the camera around and view the scene from different viewpoints. To do that, we need to add the Orbit Controls plugin I mentioned earlier. OrbitControls.js is a module that usually resides in the examples directory associated with the 3.js library. For the purposes of this example, I'm going to import this plugin directly into our Hype project. You could also call it from a content delivery network, but we're trying to keep everything local here. With this in mind, I've copied a version of this code directly into Hype's resources panel. But before we can use this plugin, it's necessary to make one small change to it so that it looks in the correct place for the version of the 3.js library that we're using. I've shown the change here in these before and after code snippets. Next, we have to make a wrapper module that imports this plugin and configures it for our use. I've called that module controls.js, and it looks like this. The structure of this kind of module should look familiar because it's just like all the other component modules in our project. Following the same pattern that we've used for these other modules, we now need to import controls.js into world.js. Run the create controls function to launch an instance of orbit controls for our scene. And then add that instance to our 3D world here. Once we do that and launch our hype project in a browser, we get this output, which looks pretty good. Our shapes animate individually just like before, but now we can also rotate, pan, and zoom the entire scene as well. However, there is one obvious problem. Can you see what it is? One of the consequences of moving the camera within a 3JS scene that only has directional light is that it's possible to go to the dark side. In this case, the dark side means the parts of our shapes that are always in the shadows and therefore have surfaces that appear pitch black. These black surfaces become visible when we move the camera so that it points towards the light source. So far, we've only used directional light in our 3D world because it's the most straightforward option. To avoid this problem, we need to add a secondary light source. One possibility is to add a small amount of ambient light to our scene. To do this, we need to elaborate lights.js, which is the module where we define the lights in our 3D world. You can see how we've done this in this code block from that module. 
Lights are effectively just another object in the scene, and you define them in a similar way. After that, you import the revised lights.js module into world.js, just as we have done several times before. And finally, in world.js, it's just a matter of adding both sets of lights to the scene, just like the other objects we've added. Now when we launch our revised height project in a browser, the surfaces that are in the shadows are no longer pitch black, no matter where our camera is pointed. I hope you enjoyed this third introductory video and now appreciate the importance of the camera position in 3JS scenes. Being able to include a plugin like Orbit Controls in a Hype project is an essential step towards harnessing the full power of external modules. There are many external modules like this that extend the core 3JS library. In fact, the 3JS codebase alone contains hundreds of extensions in its examples folder. To use any of these modules, you need to extract them out of the dense directory structure of the 3JS codebase and place them in the Hype Resources panel. You should also check that any references in these modules reflect their new location. There are also a lot more things you can do with the camera in 3JS scenes. We barely scratched the surface in our example. If you're interested to learn more about using the 3JS library in your Hype projects, keep an eye out for future videos on the Altered Mind Wear YouTube channel.